YVBN, the Rich Video Blog Network, Bellica, Massachusetts, home to lots of great sports video blogs. YVBN, Bellica, Massachusetts. Good morning, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Google+. Plus. This is Rich again, back for your first video blog of the day for Saturday, October 1st, 2016, around 6.32. Can't believe it's October, the final quarter of the year. It's raining out right now, some rain showers. Not going to be a washout today by any means, but we will be dodging some raindrops here and there. You won't see the sun today. Might not see the sun for a couple of days. But we do need the rain. And all eyes have to be focused on the tropics. Hurricane Matthews is having a beeline through the, the, the um, Dominican Republic, Haiti, Cuba. And it looks like it wants to light up the eastern seaboard. So anywhere from Florida to Maine has to pay attention to this rainstorm. It could be a drought buster for New England. But wait and see about that. Some news to report on the RVBN News. The Boston Red Sox beat the Toronto Blue Jays by a score 5-3. David Ortiz had another home run. Rick Purcell didn't get his 23rd win, but I think he's going to win the Cy Young Award for, for the American League, in my humble opinion. And the Red Sox will be facing off against Cleveland Indians in the American League Division Series um, on TBS, which is going to be called by Ernie Johnson, Cal Ripken Jr., and Ron Darling. I wish like Kenny the Jet Smith and Charles Barkley and Shaquille O'Neal would make a cameo in that series in the booth because it would get high ratings because the Texas Rangers won so they clinched home field of Hanget throughout the playoffs including the World Series. The New York Mets have clinched at least a tie for a wild card spot so that means they, they would do no worse to play like a Playing game to just get to the wild card game. And the Boston Bruins beat the Detroit Red Wings by a score of 2 to 1 in overtime for the first win of the preseason. So that's good. And 54 years ago today, the Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson made its debut on NBC. Johnny hosted it for close to 30 years and 49 years ago today was the impossible dream season for the Red Sox when they clinched the pennant against the Minnesota Twins. Second video blog of the day will talk I'll talk, talk about that 1967 season that was kind of the birth of Red Sox Nation. And this weekend on Decades, beginning at 1 p.m. today, is a weekend binge of Police Woman starring Angie Dickinson and Earl Hallman. So watch that on Decades, which is 4.2 in Boston. And that's about it on news from the RVB and Newswire. Do 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 do. Be back in a flash. Do you want to advertise your business? Or a shout out and a plug? You can private message me and. And you could do, you could have your thing in between the newswire and the main video blog of the day. So, private message, which that's it. I'm back. My first video blog of the day is my personality profile. This month, I'm going to be switching it up a little bit. I'll be doing the personality profile, the first video blog of the day. And today's personality profile is... One of the most famous Chicago Cubs player ever. He's probably maybe the second most famous Chicago player. I mean, Chicago Cubs player of all time. I'm talking about Ron Santo. Ron Santo was a third baseman for the club Cubs for 14 out of his 15 seasons. He later became famous for being a color man for 
Cubs broadcast on WGN Radio for many years. Ron Santo was a great third baseman. He eventually made the Hall of Fame posthumously in 2012. Ron was born and he grew up in Seattle, Washington. He loved baseball. In fact, he played Babe Ruth baseball as a young stud in high school baseball. The Cubs signed him in 1959. This was before they had an amateur draft. He spent a couple of years in the minor leagues. Then he made the Chicago Cubs in 1960. And he played 15 seasons in the bigs. 14 with the Chicago Cubs. And then his last year, 1974, he went to the south side of Chicago to play for the White Sox. Actually, he was going to go to the Angels in a trade, but um, Ron was a 10-5 guy, and he vetoed that trade. He probably didn't want to go to the Angels because he loved living in Chicago. And Ron Santo was a, like one of the greatest um, third baseman fielders of all time. He was known for his heel click, and he hid a medical condition for many years when he played baseball. Ron was a type 1 diabetic. He had to get insulin shots and sometimes if that didn't work he would snack on a candy bar and if you're a diabetic you should stay away from candy bars if at all costs because there was a fear if Ron Santo rev revealed that he had type 1 diabetes while playing baseball it could uh, it could have affected baseball career, and he probably would have been cut by the Cubs, but he was a very good player. He didn't need to be cut by the Cubs. And his some of his stats for what he did, 11 seasons, he had 20 or more home runs in a season. 13 seasons, he had 100 or more hits. Uh, on four um, four seasons, he had 100 or more RBIs. He scored 100 runs one season. Two times, he was a um, 300 hitter. Twelve times, he had 20 or more doubles in a season. One time, he had five or more triples in a season. He made the um, National League All-Star team t um, four times. And four times, he was a gold gl glove third baseman. He was one of the best defensive third basemen of his generation in the National League. And he finished in top 10 in the MVP voting for the National League four times. Ron never played in a playoff game or a World Series because his Cubs at the time were mediocre at best. There were one, one season in 1969. He almost made the playoffs because the Cubs finished second in the NL East behind the New York Mets and they had a great um, season up to September and this was when an infamous infamous black cat walked through um, walked through the Cubs on deck circle in a game against the New York Mets and that unraveled the Cubs season. Um, Ron retired after the 1974 season. His career stats were 277 hitter, 342 home runs, 1,331 RBIs, 2,254 hits, 365 doubles, and 67 triples. Ron was eligible for the Hall of Fame for the first time in 1980, but he didn't get a necessary vote. He was dropped from the ballot. But he was reinstated a couple of years later because of, like, he was such a good player and he was on the ballot many more times. But he did not get the necessary 75% of the vote to remain on. His last year on the ballot, 1998, he probably had 45% of the vote. And then um, Ron we joined Cubs, the Cubs in 1990 as a color man on WGN for many years. Very, very popular with the listeners of WGN. He attended a lot of Cubs conventions throughout the years. And diabetes was taking over on Ron Santos. He eventually had to have both 
legs amputated and then he had heart problems and vision problems. He, his number 10 was retired by the Cubs, rightfully so. And Ron passed away in 2010 of complications of diabetes. Diabetes is one of the worst diseases of all time, in my humble opinion. There's no known cure, but it could be controlled. But I hope one of these days they could have a cure for diabetes, just like they need a cure for cancer. But anyway, um, Ron was voted into the Hall of Fame posthumously in 2012. He should have been um, inducted into the Hall of Fame when he was retired. But those things happen, and Ron Sandow is probably um, the second most famous Cubs player of all time behind Ernie Banks. And that's about it on that. I will be back later Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Google Plus with two more video blogs today. The Impossible Dream about the 1967 Boston Red Sox second video blog of the day. And the third and final video blog of the day is the top 10 list of the greatest sports athletes in the history of LA sports. There's probably going to be a lot of Lakers players on there, so I'm not going to tell you who. And keep calm, everybody. I'm a Julie Button guy. Molly Rosenblatt of WCCO Rocks and has nice legs. Elizabeth Hot, so, so stunning. She's the best. Amy Squeezy's awesome. Awesome, Amy. Linda Church of WPIX. Channel 11 in New York is such a rocking cougar. She's got the best legs in New York City. And Papa Gibbs of ABC 11 has a sweet southern accent. And it's got the best legs in Raleigh, North Carolina. And Anishka, see the women today. The women's going to run away. Bye now.